Hello. Today we have Dr. Venkatesh as our resource person. Can you hear me? Introduce Adarsha. At present, he is professor and head department of folklore and tribal Hello. studies. He is also dean of School of Human and Social Sciences in Kuppam, Dravidian University, Chittur District, Andhra Pradesh. <coughs> Hello. He has several administrative positions. Hello, sir. We can hear you. He was member of board of studies, board of examinations, and previously. He was registrar evaluation Karnataka Folklore University, Gatagodi, Shigao Taluk, Haveri District, Karnataka. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. He performed many UGC projects, one of which was Folk Epics and Epic Narrators of Karnataka. He was also the director of international seminar conducted at uh, conducted on folk epics of South Asia. <clears throat> he was resource person in many of the workshops, like Fossil Regional Workshop series held at Mysore, Udupi, and Dharwar. Karnataka, Kannada University Hampi workshop for PhD students, Dravidian University, Kannada Sahitya Parishad, Bangalore. He also have participated in many research projects and have uh, done on his sole behalf also. Impact of inclusive education on tribal kids, government of Karnataka SSA, epic of Melaranga, documentation and translation into English, NFSC Chennai, Folk imagery, textualization of folk narratives, Dravidian University Kuppam, Elamma, the goddess of the <coughs> marginalized department innovative project UGC sponsored. Encyclopedia of African Folklore, Karnataka Folklore University, transformation of cultural regional fixity to university, comparative study of classical, popular, and folk literature. He have also organized many international and national seminars and conferences like seminar he was the director of the seminar first conference of center for folklore survey of india at bhadravati seminar director 29th state level folklore conference at bhadravati for karnataka university he was also the director of seminar seminar on globalization and environment issues related to mining he also was coordinator of the workshop on folklore outreach through media and tourism on april 2 to 4 he also was a coordinator of the workshop of preservation of manuscripts and reading of palm leaf scripts. He also was a coordinator of decoding Veda Vidya, Puttiga Matha, Udupi. International seminar on oral epics of South Asia. He also was a director of international seminar on folk narratives, Hyderabad. He also was a director of national seminar at Mudusri Tippa, Ramanagar. He also directed national seminar at Dravidian University. He was a coordinator there. He also was director of national seminar on folk life as reflected in manuscripts, Karnataka Janpada University, Gatagodi. He also directed national seminar on Janpada Vaisheshtya, Ranga Mancha, Kagodu, Sagara, and Karnataka Janpada, in, uh, Janpada University, Gatagodi. You also have attended and conducted so many workshops 
in uh, like uh, by professor lori hanko of finland at udupi professor ellen jabor of usa usa at shillong professor billy mail purushottama and professor t s satyanath at hampi uh, by professor r v s sundaram related with south indian folklore dictionary and cyclopedia of south indian folklore preservation of manuscripts udupi writers workshop university of mysore 10 to 11 march kannada university hampi and so many others are here he has so many publications of books mailaranga tradition mailarada uh, jatre uh, jatre galu pradarshana adhyayana mayakara mailara abhivyakta janpada kalavidya pujari iranna reflecting folklore group identities habitats dynamics of folklore mailaranga jatre and so many are other that are related to the folklore and folk culture of his native place he also have done translation works he also have edited uh, around 10 books and presented chapters in so many books around uh, he has published papers around 100 theek hai and uh, on seminars and uh, conferences and national levels he has performed his research papers so what i want to say that we have such a such a person with us jinke paas mein फोकलोर पर रिसर्च करने के सिवा कोई दूसरा काम नहीं है तो लेट्स होप कि हम उनसे फील्ड वर्क फील्ड स्टडीज फील्ड सर्वे डेटा कलेक्शन और उनके अपने रिसर्च वर्क के बारे में जानने की पूरी कोशिश करेंगे वो जो हमें बताएंगे हमको थोड़ा ध्यान से सुनना होगा एक और प्रॉब्लम हो सकती है कि उनकी लैंग्वेज हिंदी नहीं है इट विल बी इंग्लिश और हिंदी ओके तो थोड़ा सा एडजस्ट करेंगे बीच बीच में ये शोर नहीं मचाएंगे कि हमें कुछ नहीं समझ में आ रहा है हमें सिर्फ हिंदी आती है राइट हेलो सर हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल वेरी मच वी कैन हियर यू वेलकम सर थैंक यू it is Eligible. very it is very impressive uh, cv of yours and fine we are very much obliged that you gave the time or uh, we will be having six consecutive sessions by him he will be resource person of this week so let's continue so please continue am i visible to you yes sir we can see you good okay just a minute uh, today some adjustment program will be there today by tomorrow onwards uh, it will be that's okay sir that's okay uh, today, i do have to run are there uh, like if any inconvenience are there you please bear with it that's okay sir so let me commence my work okay sir thank yes so i believe i can share my powerpoint also share sir okay so first of all welcome to all and thank you uh, my voice is okay audible yes sir yes sir so i am very happy to be with you all in this particular a long session of 10 days actually five continuous days in the beginning and next again another five days or six days so i am very happy to share my experiences with you as a researcher and i am very happy because uh, you young researchers you are actually working on folk folklore along with your uh, regular field uh, art field so i know you are all actually 
uh, working on uh, fine arts most probably all, all of you are artists so uh, i will make one point very clear in the beginning itself i am not an artist i am an art analyzer uh, i am actually uh, particularly analyzer of uh, um, folk performing arts therefore my research my ideology my thoughts everything it is actually centered around folklore only but uh, when you consider uh, folklore research or research in general uh, at the concept level there will not be much difference actually about research in uh, fine arts or research in uh, folk arts because our interest towards folklore research or interest about finding some important items afresh from the existing sources so uh, this is actually common in any of the field even in science also we are finding something new we are telling it is something like uh, people are telling that priestley discovered oxygen so before he discovered that oxygen oxygen was there in the environment still it was not identified by the people till that particular day therefore a researcher is able to make the thing which is existing already visible to all other people so many times we also may work in that particular way or in some other cases there will be some sort of misunderstandings or confusion let us take the example of copernicus and galileo before galileo before copernicus the people had a different type of ideology they thought that this earth is flat when uh, bartolomeo dias reached good hope of africa in 1848 18, or when columbus reached uh, new found land america in 1492 or when vasco da gama reached calicut of india through sea route in 1498 the people did not believe that the earth is round they can travel in different ways when galileo or copernicus said these things in the beginning the church actually opposed them even galileo was actually punished for saying such things you might have studied the lifestyle of galileo why i am telling this is we the people who are actually researching in fine arts field or folklore field we may not be able to discover america or we may not be able to identify earth is flat or oval or sphere or we may not be able to find a new bulb which was actually found by edison or we cannot be able to find something like marconi a radio or something but our understanding about our culture our understanding about our belief system ritual practices it is also deeply embedded in the life of common people and these items how they are actually creating a sort of influence over our life how these belief systems they are actually functioning for the welfare of the community how community is actually strictly created there customary practices and lifestyle see all these things are also are related to our life only 
see finding the comfort is one particular area where actually science is working upon whereas finding the comfort to our thinking that's actually the work of our other type of social science research aims and objectives therefore i think it is very essential now to understand what is research then what is our source of data what sort of information we need for our research work because we cannot get the information just a minute just a minute for our data so the research it is actually based upon the information the information should be read in the proper way it should be understandable we should be able to create a logic with the help of these uh, data then this logical analysis of this data this actually takes us to new type of thinking then we will be able to put some sort of theoretical perspectives over it why we need theoretical perspectives why not we work why not we do research without the help of any theoretical perspective this argument always will be there the question of nativism actually it arises only with that because always we are actually following some sort of models which are provided by the foreigners we indians we are not actually able to have our own uh, models of research But therefore what we are doing we are actually applying our data into foreign uh, theoretical perspective so that we are getting a different type of inference like that such different type of arguments are actually coming but still what i am telling is if we want to create our own research models for that also we have to look into the foreign research tools research models then only we will be able to identify where we are standing what our data is actually giving the information so now i will come to the very basic points we are actually now working upon research what is research first finding something new okay finding something new we know water is there it is having two components of hydrogen one component of oxygen so that is a research in chemistry so okay we are having one art picture is there in front of us three colors are being used in it so what is the percentage of color used particularly etc etc if we start analyzing those things okay is that the research yes it's a component of research if a person uses only charcoal to create a particular art yes if you are telling that he used this with the help of charcoal okay you may wonder what is there even the small boy also can understand it is prepared with this particular color with this particular charcoal or pencil or uh, some other uh, paint what is there in it are we going to say that this is by asian paints nippon paints is that the research no you just shift your thinking if you are finding one monument in a forest which was maybe some 3000 years old some anthropologist might have found this you are entering into it there will be a cave there will be a wall in the cave there may be an art okay so far nobody no artist visited that particular place 
only some cowards, some village people might have seen that. With their help, you people enter to that particular place. You just imagine that particular place. So something is there. When something is there, when you are looking at it, can you able to say that this is by Asian paints? You cannot say like that. Can you say red, green, or any other base colors? These colors are used for creating this. You are not sure. Because over the years, over the centuries, it might have faded. The original look was different and the present day look might be different. In many films, now the black and white films, they are actually with the help of these uh, uh, artificial new technologies, they are bringing it back in colors. So by imagining or by different methods. Like that, you also may tell that this is having this color, this color, this color. Then the question arises, okay, that picture is there. Whether this picture is painted or drawn, whether it is by dots, whether it is by lines. So different questions will start rising. See, how many questions you will get? See, your effort to find answer for all these questions, that itself is actually the research procedure, what you are going to use. But what type of method you have to apply for these things? One thing you understand or you try to understand, you are standing on the shoulders of your grandparents. Whatever you are thinking, your seniors are already told about it. I am talking about base colors. Every artist will speak about that, base colors. Why? Because so many years, so many centuries, people are telling that these are the base colors, these should be used, etc., etc. And by practice, you can understand, yes, it is true. But it is not your knowledge, you are not the founder of that. Actually, it is already, some people actually identified that. Similarly, your worldview, now I am using one particular technical word, worldview. Worldview is Lok Drishti. What is that? See, we are having one particular idea, our India, of course, considering Hindu as one base, Hindu mythologies are actually base for our thoughts. Okay, I am I'm creating a frame for you to understand the situation. We are in so many mythological stories. What is the story? This earth, it is actually standing on the hood of a serpent. What is the name of that serpent? This earth is actually placed on the hood of Actually, there is one serpent which is having 1,000 serpent heads and our earth is actually standing on that, Adishesha. On the head of the Adishesha, this uh, earth is standing. Okay, when we consider the works of Galileo and Copernicus, they also had some sort of ideology before their discoveries. Actually, in Greek mythology, there was the thought that this earth is actually flat, it is floating on the ocean, and this earth, it is actually standing on the back of three shark teeming actually. So, this concept is actually embedded in the mind of common people and when a scientist tells something new, people are not ready to accept it. So, as a researcher, your journey actually begins from that particular stage. 
first of all you means you are a representative of a community you means you are a citizen of some country you means you belong to some discipline of academic studies you may be a mfa you may be a bfa you may be a ma folklore person you may be a tribal studies anthropologist you may be a sociologist you may be any other economist whatever so you are having your own ideology in your mind you already developed some sort of concepts in your mind with that concept your research actually begins are you in the correct path what knowledge you are having now whether that knowledge is correct knowledge what is the basic idea you are actually expressing about the particular art form or particular item which you are going to study whether your knowledge thinking your background information whether it is correct there actually your journey begins so being a research scholar it is your first duty to rethink about your knowledge first you are telling see our mythology tells you so many things your grandmother your mother your parents they have told you to do lot of good works why you should not lie you should not stole others items you should not do so many bad things why because after your death there will be two doors you have two options actually one is hell another one is heaven swarga or naraka where is heaven in which direction this is earth actually there are three lokas i think you are all well versed with our hindu mythology we are having three lokas actually upper side one loka is there we are in the middle matya is in the middle swarga somewhere and naraka somewhere where is swarga whether it is in the upper side or in the below side upper side ha huh? Yes, upper side. Kushbu. Upper side, sir. Upper side. Actually, if I look at the upper side, I make it the second floor. If I go further, I may reach the final roof and then sky. I don't know whether there is a swarga or not, because we travelled a very long, very long distance. in science trying to understand the real life the present day is environment the present environment is telling so many truths about the existing or real world which is around us but we are living with the same time with our mythological world also even if i am a doctorate i taught for phd students for so many years when my father passed away i should stand in front of the priest and i should follow whatever the instructions he has given because i believe i want my father's soul should rest in peace we are not ready to give up those things uh, i am basically a science graduate i taught physics for more than 18 years i cannot tell that internally whether i am having that feeling or not it is different internally i believe the existence of swarga or naraka i don't know it's for myself but in front of my family members i cannot speak this in front of my community members i cannot speak them because they are ready to brand me as something else rationalist leftist this that so many brands are there okay ideologies are actually varying but every person is having some sort of thinking 
some sort of confirmation of ideas actually about the existence of world about the existence of our community about the establishment of our family about the linkages and lineages we still believe rama belongs to raghuvamsha raghu comes to that particular list of emperors in that particular item there are scholars who can tell the name of the father of rama the father of dasharatha the father of that fellow the father of that fellow so i have some folk artists they will give a series of this i may wonder i also did i be, i am having a, if you ask your shubham madam she will tell i am having lot of uh, uh, happiness that my memory is so good etc 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 but uh, if you ask what is the name of the third brother of uh, duryodhana so my all capacity actually that uh, stops there itself because uh, i am very strongly remember the name of duryodhana okay then dushasana and stops our memory of course if you are still able to identify some name uh, that may be dushale the sister of duryodhana but remaining names but our folk artists are there without any sort of confusion they will tell all 99 names so our communities are actually having such belief they believe that these people are lived once in our earth there are different type of communities they are worshiping their heroes the heroes are their cultural heroes the cultural heroes are considered as ancestors and these ancestors they lived sacrificed their life for the welfare of that particular community etc etc many such belief systems are there we cannot create anything away from these particular belief systems what happens to the great artist from india who drew certain pictures of saraswati with veena can you identify the name of the artist nandlal bose ha huh? nandlal bose raja ravi varma राजन टू all you are working on research yeah. you are all art research yeah. students you have to work on canvas your area restricts to only that you need not think of anything else yeah. abstract art is there yeah. traditional art is there ravivarma art is there okay many other things are there purli is there even hase chitara this floral drawing is there so many so many things are there actually so many yeah. varieties are the ganji fort is there so many things yeah. are there okay everything is in one canvas is it not it is given to you if you look at that canvas you can write one big book of 300 pages you can submit it for the purpose of phd university will acknowledge it you will become doctorate so why you have to worry about uh, hinduism islamism christianism buddhism what this religion is doing with this tell me the concept of god okay let us not worry about the concept of god let us worry about the depiction of god, picture of god when i said shiva you will feel gangetar that is head when i said krishna 
you will get the feeling that he will be with that peacock feather or flute in his hand now you fold your eyes close your eyes you just imagine a deity of vishnu chaturbhuje shankar chakra gadha padma kireta is it try is it try you will get some imagination do you believe this imagination is pictureized and every temple sorry every house walls start decorated with these calendars of these deities but these deities are actually pictureized by the imagination of ravi varma so just you imagine you are paintings in one canvas it is having so many thousands of so many so many centuries of thinking is that thinking is not your thinking that's actually borrowed from your senior generation from one generation to another generation this knowledge actually got transfer it is true or false that is that question i am not raising here i am actually trying to tell you that as a researcher when you leave your house to reach your lab to do the research the journey begins not with your bag having one tape recorder one voice recorder one laptop one camera some batteries etc your mind also carries so many things with it and your research is actually carried by that therefore the information it starts analyzing even before you start doing your research can you grasp this point so this is actually my first part of discussion thank you you are something you are a researcher means you may be a student you may be a next part but when you start a new research you are a student again i may be telling that i have done so many research projects i have written so many papers uh, shobham has told you because she is good to me she tells so many good things about me but the point is if i take up a new work maybe new work on mother goddesses or new work on uh, uh, muslim uh, that uh, sufi cult i may be new to that particular uh, area my knowledge actually uh, it may be a beginning of that particular journey but what all the knowledge i am having till this day what all the knowledge you are having till this particular day that always affects your research that always tries to overpower the new thoughts coming to you you always will be raided by those particular things i think you want to test it is it not so now i will share my uh, this one now just a minute i will i will try to share just a minute i am taking a small because i want to share one powerpoint presentation i want to share can you view this particular item hello no sir no sir no we sir. are not able to see hello 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 why it is not possible to share somebody can tell me sir, sir go to the three dots yes i went there 
उसके जस्ट बिसाइड दिस थ्री डॉट्स देयर इज वन अपवर्ड एरो हां या नेक्स्ट टू दैट इज यस अपवर्ड एरो प्रेजेंट योर एंटायर स्क्रीन ए विंडो ए टैब अह नो नो सर यस सर हियर इट इज वन अपवर्ड एरो प्लीज क्लिक दैट अपवर्ड एरो ओके नाउ हां इट विल से प्रेजेंट नाउ Just uh, it is not functioning. Uh, any problem with that? We got trouble shooting. Sir, when when you go in, uh, apply visuals, open picture in picture, full screen, change layout. Sir, beside okay. three dots. No, sir. Beside three dots, there is one upward arrow. Yes, I, I got it. It is yes, telling sir. that present. Present now. Yes. Ah, uh, your entire screen, a window, a tab. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, uh, you I say your entire screen. Yes. But it is not allowing me. Most probably, admin has to give me option to share. Uh, no sir. Ah, yes. No, yes sir, I, think, I think now I share it. Yes sir. You just select that thing. Ah yes. Now okay. can you see this particular uh, picture? Yes, yes sir. Yes sir. It's sir. visible. Yes sir. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Now I will come to. the formal beginning of my talk actually so i am extremely grateful to dr shubham shivam professor shubham shivam for providing me this opportunity to be with you for another 10 days and uh, i am actually speaking on this research and documentation uh, particularly i am dealing with this fourth point of unit 2 researching and documentation importance of documentation of artworks practices then data collection and data analysis of course i may more concentrate on unit 3 understanding folk and popular culture and art practices of course i speak about uh, art practice very less i will speak more about understanding folk and popular culture so please try to understand why it is because it's my limitation also so now i am coming to the first point that's what is research so one more thing uh, please uh, minimize your screen minimize my screen okay minimize uh, this one is screen this one of uh, uh, class this is okay so, ha to ye uh, then this screen will be presented in matlab uh, pura aa jayega it will be presented at whole it's okay now we can see it is small only the picture you can you see yes sir we can see the picture is it okay sir it's okay it's okay sir we can manage ha okay. uh, can you manage okay because yes. that picture is very important that painting is very important for me okay sir okay i spoke about uh, our concepts which are already developed in our mind i want to test uh, that particular item i want you all to re respond to these questions which epic this picture depicts mahabharat ha uh, mahabharat very good abhimanyu abhimanyu see abhimanyu very good mahabharat concentrate on the wheel then you can understand very fine so not only abhimanyu wheel is actually related to another very important personality in mahabharata krishna arjun krishna arjun uh, another person is there actually caste problem is there in mahabharat and uh, one of the very uh, bhishma pitama dronacharya ayyo still you have not come to that particular character against arjun karna karna karna, karna. Karna, yes, sir. Karna. Karna is there. His wheel actually struck in the mud. Yes, yes. I, I have. And is died. Very good. Very good observation. Warfield also you observed, so you understood. There is one uh, uh, big club is there, so you understood that is it is Gadayudha. So Mahabharata. Right. Sir. 
let me answer or let me keep my answer for some some more time hello yes sir you can ask sir yes sir yes anybody is having any other answer other than mahabharata so now i will come back to my regular presentation you have seen that picture okay no sir it's fully blank ha huh? it's not visible sir it's fully blank whole uh, whole uh, screen is uh, black no that, that that that's a problem now so okay i will try to show it again yes now it's visible now it's visible Yes, sir. Yes. Now I, be, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe it is more visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Yes, sir. Ah. Now you will, I will be giving you one more option. You look at the picture and tell me which part of a epic story this picture belongs to. now you read uh, this particular uh, statement the systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions research is the process of finding solutions to a problem after a door of study and analysis of the situational factors this is exactly what research is i have not answered your question actually so far i have not discussed anything about that particular painting it's done by one of the artist like you now i will come back to my original discussion i told you when you are leaving your house you are carrying not only your baggages not only your uh, requirements for the purpose of doing that particular research we call it as pre field work activity if you are going to a field how many days you will be in the field that work you will do what all the items you have to carry to that particular place that also you have to think whether food is available in that place or not that you have to think whom you are going to meet that you have to think so many things are there so you are carrying all those items along with that you also carry your your ready made informations in your mind with the help of that ready made information only you try to answer my question because when gade is there when war field is there when a wheel is there abhimanyu should come to our mind because we are well versed with that particular story of course when i diverted you from abhimanyu you might have thought of krishna but krishna's wheel is not like this is it not so now our research is actually began with this picture only another 6 days we have to work on this particular item we have to come to the conclusion finally i tell you this is not krishna when i say it is not krishna why why it is not krishna why it is not related to krishna's episode because krishna's wheel is different from this sudarshan chakra is not like this this is a wheel of a cart wheel of a chariot so krishna never actually hold that only once he raised his sudarshana against bishma but he has not used it in mahabharata yuddha for krishna once there was a time and there was a scene when krishna uh, uh, 
Krishna hold a uh, whole, uh, you know, whole a chariot. Yes. Do you have remember? Yes, yes. There, there is a there is a relationship, but but this picture is not belong to Krishna. Okay. See, I will I will I will come in a different way now. Of course. I will be discussing with you for about six days continuously. Therefore, you may feel that I am actually drawing some issues for a long time. It is not. Because I am having some specific purpose actually to do so. Uh, I am asking you one question. Be being a science teacher, I will ask one question. Which is the satellite of Earth? You will tell my expected answer is what is the expected moon. answer? Satellite for Earth? Moon. Moon. Yes, Saurabh is answering. It's moon. You just imagine if you write sun in place of this, you believe that you are a student of 7th standard or 4th standard. Okay? How much of marks for this question? One mark. Okay. If you write moon, you will get one mark. Saurav got one mark. If you write sun, yes, you young sun. Okay. How much marks I should give? One mark question it is. How much mark I should give? Zero, zero, zero. Zero, yes. Mishra got zero marks. Why I tell you? I asked the question, only one question. That question is, which is the satellite of Earth? The boy wrote, Sun. What does it inference? What does it actually mean? As a researcher, now you start thinking. Not as a primary school teacher. As a researcher, if one particular person whom you are going to interview, if he gives one particular answer, how many informations about that particular person you will get? The basic thing is, the boy doesn't know the actual answer for this question. Therefore, he is not able to get one mark. Therefore, she allotted him zero marks. Am I right? Mishra, that's your thinking, is it not? Since that boy doesn't know, sun is not the satellite of earth, he has written that particular answer. My point is, the same boy doesn't know moon is the satellite of earth. If that boy has known moon is the satellite of that earth, he would not have written sun. He would have written moon. Is it not? By seeing the answer sun, you got two answers actually. One is, the boy doesn't know sun is not the satellite. At the same time, the boy is not knowing moon is the satellite. So, zero becomes minus one now. Is it not? Next question. He has written sun. Sun is a star. It is not at all a satellite. He doesn't know sun is a satellite. Sorry. He doesn't know sun is a star. If he had that idea in his mind, certainly he would not have written there. He has not written cow there. He has written sun. Because he is not able to identify the difference between sun and moon. At the same time, he failed to understand the difference between the satellite, star, planet, etc. Therefore, he has written. Therefore, his answer is, Actually, it is giving inference for three items. One is, sun is not the satellite of Earth. Second one is, sun is a star. That also he has not understood. 
he doesn't know the actual answer moon is the so his marks becomes minus 2 if i give more answers like this his marks still becomes lesser 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 and so many minuses will be there now analyzing this way is your job whatever you see in front of you something actually comes to your mind immediately you have to make an inquiry whether that information is correct or not immediately you have to think okay whether this is the information i need it then you have to put that particular information in a particular way then only your data is a data which will become an information which will be ready for analysis otherwise it's a data you ask but one question to some informant from the field what is the satellite of earth that lady old lady from the village she will tell son you will note it very sincere student you are you will write it you will come home you will give that notes to your uh, professor okay sir i have taken 20 questions i got 18 answers for this two questions they did not answer sir 18 answers are here you please take this you will submit to your professor anything wrong with it yes being researcher it is your responsibility it is not the responsibility of the person who gives the answer to your question it is the responsibility of you to cross check what is this information do you think all the questions are having only one single answer it's not possible do you think everything is explainable by the community people no some are to be explained by the experts some are to be made known by the persons who actually works with it that's where a concept will arise the opinion when you are actually collecting information from the community person you may have to consider it as a opinion it's an opinion opinions sometimes may not be the correct answer at the same time the correct answers may not be acceptable to the community also you are actually to be very careful while utilizing such sort of informations in your research i am actually giving you different type of complications actually in the beginning itself i will tell you one story now and i will ask you to analyze this story okay some 6 plus 6 or 7 plus 7 14 students were playing kabadi in a village one snake came there maybe serpent they got afraid in the beginning but since they are all young boys they took some sticks some stones they killed it okay after some days the snake died after some days all these boys also after 30 years after 40 years after 60 years after 80 years in different time period they also died so what do you understand by this story what is there sir snake coming in the field is quite natural in villages nothing special people particularly the children playing kabaddi is common in india and killing snake is also not such a very strange thing it might have happened and these boys some died early some died later because of their 
genealogical problems or physiological problems or different problems. There is nothing actually in this story. There's nothing in this story. Okay? So, if in the field, if you get such a sort of story, first, very interestingly, you will write it, then you will keep it aside. Is it not? I will continue this story to the next place. You don't know. All these 14 children and the snake born in different places to rebirth, but reached the same place after some time. Who reached first? Who died first? It should reborn first. It reached first. Okay? Then, according to seniority of death, the rebirth took place in different places and they also came there. Therefore, some are become juniors, some are become seniors. This snake died first, took the rebirth first, therefore it became more senior and became and became dash. Can you understand anything from this? Again, very difficult. The story is incomplete. There is nothing in this story. Okay, only creating some sort of curiosity. Nothing is there in this. I will feel that dash. Since that snake died first, took a rebirth first, became senior, therefore it is the manager in the same factory where V14 born later, we became employees, labors under him. Now I complete the story. I will complete the story. Since in the previous birth, we killed this snake by hitting by sticks, by hitting by stones. It is having a lot of angry. Therefore, this manager, whenever looks at us, he will bark, he will abuse us, he will scold us. Whatever work we do, he will not get satisfied. Can you understand something now? Sir, in the last line, what you said, I couldn't he hear. Yeah, please speak loud. Whatever, uh, what you said, whatever, whatever we do. Can, can, can you understand anything from the story now? I completed the story. I understood your study, but in, in the last line, what you said, I could not hear properly. Ah. Actually, one of the person is narrating this story. One of the person is narrating this story. He is telling to his mates. Many people are sitting around him. He is telling this story. He is telling this story. Since that snake is actually killed by us by hitting with sticks, it is having a lot of angry with us. That is why. Since the snake is born as manager, this manager, whenever looks at us, he will not get satisfied by our work. He is not happy. He always says, bush, 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 bush. Always scolds us. Always tells something wrong about us. He is always angry about us. See, this is Indian, sorry, this is industrial folklore. This is not a true story. This is a created imaginative story, but created by whom? See, this is created by the people subordinate to some officer. Point one, the disgusted people, because they cannot actually impress the 
manager. Their frustration is there. They cannot express this in front of that particular manager. They cannot scold the manager. They cannot make a fight with him because his increment is actually in his hands. His promotion is in his hands. He cannot speak. He, he cannot spell out all his anger and other things. What is he going to do? He actually uses this opportunity of having some free time during the lunch hour where manager has gone to his house for lunch. During that time, one of the very creative person among them, he will narrate such a story. Everybody will get lost. Okay, people are laughing now. It's a sort of relax for them. Their agony is relaxed. By 2.30, the manager will come back. And he will make a shout. Hey, why you are sitting still? Immediately, everybody will take their backs. They will start doing work, obliging the manager, threatening, or sorry, without any sort of threatening. They simply oblige whatever the orders he gives. They do it. Is it not? Actually, the folk people's life is quite similar to this. They are poor people. They are living in the village without facilities. Their life is very difficult. You take the life structure of village people, folk life, you take it. It's very difficult. Subordination is there. Their voice is not actually listened to the authorities. Their voice is not listened to the jamindars. There will be exploitation. There are people of exploitation. So the exploited voice will be rough. But the people who got exploited, their voice is, it is not coming out actually in the same way. So in 19th century, when the definition for folklore is given, the definitions are like this only. It is the suppressed voice of the farmers. It is the suppressed voice of the people who actually having starvation, having difficulties, who cannot raise their voice. They created some sort of songs like that. So when you got a lot of mythological information, a lot of folkloristic information, a lot of stories about the communities, a lot of legends, even, even our uh, Vishnu Purana or uh, Shani Purana or Garuda Purana or whatever Puranas you find in Sanskrit language, you cannot read it as a separate book. You have to take it into the context. You have to fix it in the context. You have to try to understand in which context it is actually being spread. See, structural theory is there to understand the literature. This structural theory tells Rama goes to dash. Rama goes to Rama goes to Rama goes to Rama goes to forest. We want the character, is it not? Because always we want to send Rama to the forest. Rama went to so many places in uh, Ramayana. But when I said Rama goes to, the first thought will come to the forest. If I write Rama goes to school, grammatically the sentence is correct. Nothing wrong. But what answer I want? See, it is not that you decide the answer. I decide the answer. As a researcher, if I decide the answer, are you able to get the correct information? No, so, sir. How open we should be? Because we doesn't know whether Rama goes to forest or Rama goes to school. It depends upon the context. If that Rama is the son of one of the Tashildar in a village, Taluk headquarters, then that drama should go to school, not to the forest. 
But if it is Ayodhya Rama, son of Dasharatha, he might have gone to Vishwamitra's Ignashala also to fight against Tartaki's sons and Maricha and Subhava, etc. But that we are not referring. Rama goes to Sita Swayamvara also, that we are not referring. Rama goes to Lanka also, we are not referring. Why? Because in the whole of the myth, the total turning point is Rama going to forest is very important. Rama is going to forest. The, the one particular sentence or that one particular word is a, it's having a lot of weight in it and it gives you the whole of the picture. What your canvas is telling, it is having the same effect. You are looking at one particular canvas, one small picture will be there. That may be your imagination because you are a MFA student and you know how to write the art. Of course, I am not, I cannot, but I can analyze it, what you have written. Now, the artist is not there. Now, it is taken to London or Japan or Korea. It is displayed there. The person who is coming to that particular place, he doesn't know. Say Rama is here, Rama in Bali also. In Malaysia also, we are having Rama in a story. So I did not say Bali. Because those people may know Rama in If I place this particular picture in front of those people, in Japan or in Korea or in uh, Scotland or in uh, some other place, what would be their answer? Whether they are able to tell about the Abhimanyu, whether they are able to tell about uh, Krishna, whether they are able to tell about Karna, with little difficulty you come out with that particular name, Karna. Is it possible? So, now data, extracting data, just by looking an object, very difficult. Is it not? Now I will come to the picture again. Can I show that picture once again? Sorry. Yes, sir, it is visible. Please look at this. Tell me something about this picture. I started with Mahabharata, but I continued with Ramayana. Uh, there is a flag uh, who rep represent the uh, flag. Now you can see other items. Here is one wheel. There are how many hands? Two hands. There is one chair. And the chair keepers are there. In the dark side, in the top side, left side, top, there are images of three persons moving towards a forest. Have you observed these things? Have you observed these things? You observed only wheel. You might have observed some, uh, uh, this one. Uh, weapons are actually falling down after their usage in the war. Two things you have observed. Remaining things you have not observed. This is the story not at all related to Mahabharata. Ramayana also. So when I said uh, it is not uh, Mahabharata, you said it is Ramayana. Ramayana. Justify your answer. That's where your research actually begins. First thing is you have to negate. Okay, this is not, this is not, this is not. Why it is not? That also you have to tell. Then if, we, if it is Ramayana, why it is Ramayana? You have to sustain your answer, you have to strengthen your answer, you have to justify your answer. Is it not? 
Why? There are three people who are moving towards the forest. That's one clue. Okay, Rama, Sita, Lakshmana moving towards the forest. Okay, there is a chair. Okay, chair is belong to Ayodhya. Ayodhya chair. Okay, even Delhi chair is also important. Ayodhya chair is also important. This chair is also important. But who sat upon that? Not Bharata. Not Rama. Who sat upon it? Sir. Two Padukas of Rama. That's depicted in that picture. But what is the confusion? Why the idea of Mahabharata rested in? There are two hands. There are two hands. In Kannada, hand means kai. If two hands are there, hand, hand, in Kannada, it is kai kai. Kai kai. Kai. Kai kai. Kai kai. Okay. Let's make some pun between that. Kai kai. You are knowing Ramayana from Rama. You are knowing Ramayana from Rama. Dasharatha made Putra Kameshti Yaga, got Prasadam, divided into four, gave it to his three wives. So, Bharata, Rama, for one mother each, Shatrugna and Lakshmana, for one mother as twins, etc., etc., then your story begins. If you want to understand everything, if you want to do the real research, you should not start from that particular place. You should not end to the story of bringing back Sita to Ayodhya. There will be stories beyond and before. When Dasharatha was young, just married to Kaikai, he was called to help Indra because there was a big war. And though he was human, he had a lot of strength. He took his chariot to the war field and entered into the war. By that time, the beloved wife, Kaikai, Kai, asked, I want to come with you as honeymoon to this particular war field. See, Kshatriya woman, she may feel honeymoon there also. So with great difficulty, he tried to avoid her, but uh, it was not possible because she was very beloved wife to Dasharatha. So he took her. During that time, what happened? Now you have to look at the picture. You have to observe the picture. Actually, the lock for the wheel, it was fallen down during that uh, war field. During that point, the lock was actually broken. It was fell down. And the wheel was supposed to fall down. If wheel was fallen, Dasharta could have lost his life. Not only that, he could have lost the war also. What Kaikai did, she was sitting in the chariot. She used her single small finger, left finger. She put it there as a lock. And the war continued with great pain. She actually took it because she's a Kshatriya woman. She had that uh, stuffness. And the Sharta won the war. But only after the completion of the war, he came to know that uh, the blood is actually coming out from her fingers. Then he said, Okay, you did a great job for us. I am ready to give you two boons. You take it. Then she said, I will ask the boon when time comes, not today. And when that time came, on the day of Rama Pattabhisheka. So the figure is actually 
showing that Rama should go to the forest and Bharata should be sitting on the chair. Understand? So this picture is belong to Ramayana. Our worldview is correct. Our knowledge is there in our mind. We know about Swarga and Naraka. We are in the science field. We understood so many things. We are in a lot of knowledge. Still, grasping the correct information is a very difficult task. Going to the field is very easy. It depends upon our pocket, our friendship, our networking, our enthusiasm. But that doesn't make you a perfect field worker. That doesn't make you to understand the information is collected in the field in the proper order. So today I tried to give you a brief introduction of how our mind should be prepared for doing the research. We are having a sort of garvam, ahankaram that will be with us. We are all ahankaris. No doubt. I know so many things. What is there to learn? Hey, why I should go to the field? Because I already read 10 books about it. If you have already read 10 books about Leonardo da Vinci, and if you want to do some research work on that, why to go to that Mona Lisa art or some other art made by that particular great man? It's not necessary because so many people have already written. I will take extract from that, cut and paste. I will prepare my thesis. Are you going to be a good researcher? Not possible. Not possible. You are having a lot of knowledge. Yes, fine. Research means it is actually rethinking again. Whatever the knowledge you are having in your mind, okay, you use it. But give a test. At every moment. If you are not giving a test at every moment, you cannot become a good researcher. I am not underestimating any of your knowledge. I know you are all sincere. You are all happy to do the research. But research is not just it's a ride over the information. It is not just collection and a dumping of information. It is not just finding the answers to the questionnaire which you have prepared. While preparing the question itself, you should be very careful. When you are actually trying to answer those questions, when you are actually classifying the answers, when you are classifying the data, a lot of things are being done. I hope we can work upon all these things and we can have more discussions for another five, six days this particular way. I believe my time is over for the day. It is 5.31, I think. If you want to have some questions, I am ready to make you to think about the answer rather than giving the answer. What I wanted to tell you in the beginning itself is observation is very important. Today what I said is observation is very important. Another thing is what you are thinking is it should be questioned. It should be questioned. You will get attracted with some particular item. Of course, okay, you get attracted but you try to analyze whether it is correct or not. Do rethinking, do rethinking. Then eliminate, eliminate many possible answers as wrong answers. Then you will come close to the right answer. So this is how you have to collect the data. My job is what your Shubham Madam interested me is to explain you what is data, what is 
the source. In what way we can extract? You can extract the information in any form of the way you like. There are hundreds of methods to collect the data. But I will tell you how you should not collect the information. What carefulness is required while collecting such information. I think with this example, we can come to that particular conclusion. Observation is very important. And when we identified with some particular data, of course, it is our primary responsibility to ascertain that this information is correct. If somebody tells that it is from Mahabharata, okay, it is your responsibility to go to Mahabharata story. You have to ascertain that this is correct or not. So you cannot say my work is only on canvas. No, behind the canvas, a lot of things are there. You are not standing on your foot. You are actually standing on the shoulder of your grandfather. That knowledge is there. Upon that you are standing. Therefore, it is very, very, very necessary to ascertain yourself that where you are, what knowledge you are having, what type of work you wanted to do, etc., etc. Actually, I will show another slide for your tomorrow's thinking. What is research? Area of interest, selection of topic, review of literature, hypothesis, geographical distribution, theoretical perspective, data collection, field work, pre and post field work activities, data classification, data analysis, deriving inference, research design, schedule of works, dissertation writing. This is actually the whole of the activity you are expected to do while doing your research. Research doesn't mean I am telling you, research doesn't mean it is a work for PhD. PhD is a process for knowing how to do the research. After the completion of that PhD only, when you become doctor, then only you will be able to understand how research should be done. Because it's a process. With all enthusiasm, you start doing it. I wish you all the best. You do it very sincerely. Try to be sincere. As you try to analyze this particular pictograph, okay, I believe you will find some good time. If you want to Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is the glasses over? Hello. Hello. I believe I believe my class one is over. Tomorrow okay. we will begin with class two. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Anybody is having any questions to discuss? No, sir. You explained it very okay. huh? clearly. Okay. Tomorrow let us go to the next phase of things. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.